Hey guys, this is Nathan, and welcome to the Gaming 4. Today, in this unturned map editor tutorial, I will be showing you guys how to use the objects tools that are found within the level tab. Now, these object tools, though, even though I'm getting to them at the end of the series, they're probably some of the most important tools to know how to use because they generally just make up the main body of your map, besides the terrain and decorative stuff. So, yeah. Let's get started. So, first of all, you've got all the stuff over here, but we'll start over here. Might as well. Okay, so this huge list is a list of every possible item that you can place. And these items range from large, medium, and small. And you can turn them on and off whether they show up in the list with that button. So right now, as large is the only one selected, only large things are going to be showing up in this list. And, you know, probably the smallest large thing would be, like, like a, a black truck. Okay? Now, as you start to, to place items, how you place them is by choosing one, like a snowmobile, which was recently added, uh, putting your cursor somewhere on the, uh, the map, like where you want it to show up, and pressing E. E is how you... Uh, place them down originally. E is also how you move them. So see how this one's selected? If you press E, it'll move it from there to there. And this is not a very specific way of placing them. Um, once they're placed, you can move it up and down. And as you can see, it's a little bit glitched into the ground. So, I mean, you could just move it up just a little bit as a fine-tuning thing. So, now, that's just the large, uh, the large things we can go to large and medium or just medium and medium things are generally about this size right there and guys it's important when you're selecting another item like uh, wooden chair number one see how this is still selected even though the selection says chair wood one, number one you need to get the selection off of this by pressing in an area that has nothing on it before you place that chair using E E once again guys very important Okay. So that's how to place them, and, and I'll just place a small one. Steer number one. I'm guessing it's a steering wheel. Yeah. So just in case you want a steering wheel around. So yeah, that's how you place the objects. And guys, don't be alarmed as if, because if you go far away, they'll start to disappear just to save on the rendering. But yeah, they're still there. So, okay. So that's all that. Okay, so besides using these bubbles, you can also type in something you want to find. So like book. Well, we've got tons of different books here. We got all sorts of colors. You know, we got to place them. Of course, it glitches them to the ground, so we're going to have to play move them ourselves and stuff like that. So yeah. Okay, guys. Another thing to keep in mind is that when you're manually searching for something, um these buttons still come into play. So books are only small in the small category, but if I have the small button turned off, they will not show up because there are no books in the large and medium category. So besides that, this whole side is covered, guys. There's nothing else to it. Now, as we get over here to the snap transfer ta transform and the snap rotation, these are also very useful. Um, snap transform and snap rotation are both used when you hold down control while you're moving an item. So I'm going to get a nice big item over here like airport tower. So we get this huge tower. As you can see, large objects can be very large. Um, so I want to go, oh, also these. These decide whether you're going to rotate it or move it. So let's just say I want to move it. And I want to use the snap transform because I want it to be, you know, an even distance away from, let's just make another here. Okay, guys, yeah, we'll just make another. So we got a second one over here. And actually, th that's bad for uh, demonstration. Um, the way you clone them is you can do control C, control V, and it literally makes a copy as you can see. And also control Z works as well for undoing what you just did. So now when we want to use this snap transform, I want to do it by factor 5. And guys, just so you know, that is 5 meters, not 5 feet. So how you use the transform, the snap transform, is you got to hold down control and then you move it. And as you can see, it moves it in five foot inc uh, increments. So yeah, now these are nice uh, 
about 10 feet apart, you know, from the rail. Now we want to rotate them. So there's a snap rotation as well, and it works the same way. So if I want to do it uh, 90 degrees, which is uh, approximately, well, it is one fourth of the way around. So I got to go to rotation, hold down control, and I can rotate it. As you can see, it's rotating at 90 degrees at a time. If you want to get more precise, you can just do 45. See? And guys, this is very useful if you want to like make things line up very nicely. So yeah, those are also very useful. Now, we've got this uh, global and local. These are also very, very useful. And they have to do with how you move the items around. So let's say I want to move this. OK, so it's rotated 45 degrees off of the 90 degrees that it was before. So and I'm going to go to transform. Now, as you can see, these arrows are not lining up with where it is right now. They're lined up globally. So based on the global X and Y coordinates. And this is good if you want to do everything in terms of global coordinates. But if you want to do it locally, this is what it does. See, now the arrows are based on the object's X and Y instead of the world's X and Y. And this is especially useful because if you want to move let's say this is uh, right here and you don't want to move it when, if it's stuck on global you don't want to move it necessarily that way because if you want to move it in a nice diagonal you have to move it like this and that and you know that's just imprecise well if you select it and put it on local you can move it in a perfect diagonal by just using the local um, Pretty much one last thing is you can mass select objects by just dragging and selecting multiples. And guys, at first, like if you drag like just a little bit, it won't show up. But you just got to keep dragging till it gets to a big enough size, and it'll make that select bubble. And guys, this will go like, let's see, I can't even see those smaller objects. They're still selected, guys. So, and also it's interesting to see that um this uh this coordinate this mover thing selects um is located in the middle of everything that you're selected so you can sort of see where you're selected based on where this thing is most of the objects are over here which means it's more closer to those objects and farther away from that object um okay guys once you got multiple selected you can also deselect them by holding down shift and clicking them. Now you no, see you can't shift and multiple see you can yeah. You can't shift and deselect multiples though. You gotta shift and deselect one at a time. So yeah. And if you if you're still holding shift and you you can select one that's not selected or click it again and it'll deselect it. So yeah. That's pretty much all you need to know for the uh, the objects tools. So thank you guys for watching. Uh, I hope you learned something from this video. Um, I really didn't because I've been messing around with this stuff for a while. But uh, yeah, thank you for watching. Please like it if you enjoyed it. If you want to see some more, subscribe because I'm almost done this uh, series. I really got about three videos left. So yeah. I'll see you guys later.